Hello everyone! How are you today? I am your teacher, Jem Ryman, and today we are going to discuss your Module 8 entitled Making Simple Predictions of Events Based on the Results of Experiments. Hi everyone! Welcome to my channel, Tutorial by Sir Ryman. My name is Mr. Jem Ryman Ischen, Master Teacher 2 from Escalante Central Elementary School. Click like and share if this video tutorial helps you. Don't forget to click subscribe below to keep updated for my future tutorial. For your suggestions, especially on the topic for my next tutorial, please leave your comment below. Hope you learned something in my video lessons for this week. Thank you so much for watching. Stay home and stay safe. Welcome to our mathematics class. And our objective for this week is to make simple predictions of events based on the results of experiments. Let's discuss first the what I know part of your module. Let's have number one. A bag has two green marbles, six black marbles, and nine purple marbles. If you pick a marble 17 different times, how many times can you pick a green marble? So, we have here a bag class. Inside the bag, we have two green marbles, six black marbles, and nine purple marbles. Yeah, nasa loob yan lahat ng bag. Okay? Now, kung bubuno tayo ng marble inside the bag 17 times or labing pitong beses, Ilang beses daw ang probability na mabubunot natin ang green marbles? Okay, if you notice class, how many marbles do we have inside the bag? 17 marbles inside. Since we are asked to pick 17 times, meaning pagkatapos ng 17 times, expected that the bag will be empty. Pagkatapos ng labing pitong beses, Wala nang laman yung bag natin, di ba? Since 17 times tayo magbubunot, then 17 marbles naman lahat inside the bag, what do you think would be the answer for this question? Yes, the correct answer is 2. Dalawang beses lang pwedeng mabunot ang green marble kasi dalawang green marbles lang naman ang nasa loob ng bag. Number 2. A spinner is divided into 10 equal parts. So, ito yung example ng spinner class. Half is red, meaning kalahati daw ng spinner natin ay color red. So, lalagyan natin yan ng label na red. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then, 3 tenth is white, meaning sa sampu, tatlo lang ang white. Okay, so white, 1, 2, and then 3. And then 1 fifth is purple. So 1 fifth or 2 ten. Dalawang parts out of 10 parts or that's 1 fifth. So purple daw ang kulay. Yan, dalawa yung purple ng ating spinner. Now, the question is, if you will spin it 10 times, kung paiikutin daw natin class ng 10 beses ang spinner natin, what is the best prediction possible? For the number of times that it will land on white. Ano daw ang pwede nating prediction class? Kung ilang beses maglaland ang spinner natin sa white na color. Yes! Since 10 times lang ang required natin sa pag-ikot, probably the best prediction that we will be having is 3 also. Since our spinner here has 3 white parts. So, the correct answer for number 2 is letter B. Number 3. If you flip a coin 20 times, what is the best prediction for the possible number of times that it will land on the heads? So, I know you are familiar with flipping a coin, right? So, ito yung halimbawa ng pag-flip ng coin. So, as we all know, our coin has two sides, right? The head and the tail. Now, Kung mag-flip daw tayo class ng coin 20 times, ilang beses kaya lalabas ang head na side ng coin? Para malaman natin yan, so we'll have this one. 
Ilang parts ba ng coin ang head? Yes, meron lang isang part ang ating coin na head. And how many parts does our coin have? Yes, we have two parts all in all, the head and the tail. So meaning, kung isang pag-flip lang, one half lang yung possibility na lalabas ang head out of two. Again, yung one dyan nagre-represent ng number of favorable outcomes. And then, yung two naman dyan ay ang total number of possible outcomes. Ilan lahat ang outcomes or possible outcomes ng ating pag-flip ng coin. So again, yung one dyan nagre-represent ng head. Kasi head ang itinatanong sa ating problem. And then, yung two dyan stands for head and the tail. Again, kung isang beses lang if you flip yung coin, yung possibility na lalabas ang head ay one half or 50%. Pero yung ating problem dito required us to flip the coin 20 times. So para ma-predict natin kung ilang beses ang possibility na lalabas yung head, kung if you flip ito 20 times, yung one half natin dito, multiply lang natin sa 20. Yan lang kadali. So, can you still remember how to multiply fraction and whole number? Yes, very good. Para mas madali mo maintindihan, yung whole number dito, i-convert muna natin sa fraction. Maglalagay lang tayo ng denominator na 1 sa 20. Okay, so, that's over 1. So, yung kanina, 1 half times 20, same lang yung ibig sabihin sa nakikita nyo ngayon sa screen, yung 1 half times 20 over 1. Okay? Now, can you still remember how to multiply fractions? Yes, we just multiply numerator by numerator and denominator by denominator. So, pwede natin i-apply yan kasi maliit lang yung mga numbers dito. So, we can do that. So, 1 times 20 would be? Yes, that's 20. 2 times 1 would be? Yes, that's 2. Now, 20 halves or 20 divided by 2. How much is this? Yes, that's 10. So, kung magpipredict tayo, ang possible number of times na pwedeng lumabas ang head, kung ipiflip natin ito 20 times, the answer would be 10. Okay, so the answer is letter D. Let's have number 4. The spinner shown below was spanned 40 times. The table shows the result. So, yung spinner natin dito, class, pinaikot siya ng... 40 times. So, ito yung resulta. May ibinigay na na resulta pagkatapos paikutin yung ating spinner dito 40 times. So, yung letter B, lumabas siya 14 times. Yung letter G natin, lumabas siya 12 times. Yung Y, 6 times. Ang Z, 8 times. Yung ibang letters, hindi sila lumabas. Now, the question for number 4 is, what is the probability of the spinner landing on letter Z? Siyempre, magbe-base tayo sa ibinigay na data dito as the result when the spinner span 40 times. So, letter Z yung tinatanong. So, lumabas ang ating letter Z. The number of favorable outcomes here is 8. Okay? And how many times it was span? Yes, the spinner is span 40 times. So, that would be the possible outcomes. ba? 40 times. So, 8 out of 40 Basis sa resulta dito, basis sa ibinigay na data, 8 out of 40 ang probability ng pagland ng letter Z sa ating spinner. Now, let us reduce this first. Now, i-reduce muna natin ito. We will find the lowest term for this fraction. So, how do we do that? So, let us find out the lowest term of 8 over 40. So, para gawin natin yan, we will find out first the GCF or the greatest common factor of 8 at saka 40. Ano ba yung pinakamalaking numbers na pwedeng makahati sa 8 at saka 40? Yes, very good. 8. Yung 8 ang ating GCF o yung pinakamalaking number na pwede nating gawing divisor sa 8 at saka sa 40. So, ang gagawin natin, i-divide natin yan sa 8. No, yung numerator natin at saka denominator. Now, 8 divided by 8 is 1. And 40 divided by 8 is 5. So, ibig sabihin, 1 fifth ang sagot sa number 4 or letter B. 
So the probability of the spinner landing on letter Z would be one fifth. Okay, we will use the same data for number five. The question is, what is the probability of the spinner landing on letter G? So letter G naman yung ating kukunin na probability. Based sa ibinigay na data, wherein this is the result after spinning the spinner 40 times. Okay, so yung letter G natin is 12. So number of favorable outcomes here is 12. And the number of possible outcomes naman ay 40. So, same din sa ginawa natin sa number 4. I-reduce natin siya sa lowest term. At para magawa yan, we will find their GCF or greatest common factor. What is the GCF of 12 and 40? Yung pinakamalaking number class na pwede natin gawing divisor sa 12 at saka 40. Yes, very good. That's 4. So, i-divide natin ang numerator at ang denominator sa 4. Okay, para ma-reduce siya sa lowest term. Now, 12 divided by 4 is equal to 3, right? And then, 40 divided by 4 is equal to 10. So, ang ibig sabihin, ang probability ng spinner landing on letter G is 3 over 10. So, the correct answer for number 5 is letter B, 3 tenths. This time, let's discuss the what's in part of your module. Number one, what are the possible outcomes for choosing a prime number less than 20? Now, para masagutan mo tong number one, kinakailangang alamin mo muna natin kung ano ang ibig sabihin ng prime numbers. What do we mean by prime numbers? Can you still remember? Yes, very good. Prime numbers are numbers divisible only by one or itself. Or, Yung tinatawag nating prime numbers class, may dalawang factors lang. Yung 1 at saka itself. Yung sariling number niya. Again, prime numbers are whole numbers greater than 1 that have only two factors, 1 and the number itself. Halimbawa ng prime numbers, 23. So yung factors ng 23 are 23 and 1 lang, di ba? So, yung 23 at saka 1, sila lang yung mga divisors ng 23, di ba? O, wala ng ibang numbers. So, dalawang factors lang. Ngayon, ilan ba lahat yung mga prime numbers from 1 up to 20? You have, you have to identify that para mal malaman natin yung sagot sa number 1. Yes, very good. These are the prime numbers and the possible outcomes when we talk about prime numbers less than 20. We have 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, and 19. So, yan ang mga prime numbers less than 20. So, yan yung sagot sa number 1. Yan yung mga possible outcomes natin. Let's have number 2. If Anna has 5 shirts and 3 pants, how many possible combinations of outfits she can choose from? So, para ma-solve natin yung problem na to class, gagamit tayo ng tree diagram. So, halimbawa, ito yung mga outfits niya class, no? Three pants. Now, in each pants, we will have, or she will have, five different shirts to choose. So, example, ito yung mga, mga shirts na pwede niyang pagpilian. Yan, same din dito sa pangalawang pants natin, pangatlo, same din. Na? So, para malaman natin yung mga possible na mga combinations ng outfit, ikukumbay natin yung pants at saka ng shirts. Yan. Okay. Ito yung mga possible na mga outfits na pwede niyang pagpilian class. Okay. For the third pants, ito naman. Okay. Bilangin natin ilan lahat. So, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 different outfits that Anna can choose from. So, ang final answer natin for number 2 is 15. Number 3, a businessman has 6 shirts and 9 ties. How many different shirt and tie outfits can he create? Now, ito yung mga halimbawa ng mga shirts niya class. Six yan at saka nine ang mga ties niya. Now, 
Para ma-solve natin yung number 3, gagamit tayo ng table or grid. Ito yung pwede mong magamit na solution class para ma-solve yung number 3. Now again, this is a tabular form or table or tinatawag din nating grid. As you see here, meron tayong no, different types of tie dito sa may column natin at saka yung row natin ay ang different kinds of shirts. Okay? So, I know you have the idea how to combine this one. No? Yung, for example, yung red tie, ito, at saka yung orange tie. Same also ang ginawa from other types of tie and shirts. Okay? So, how many combinations do we have here? Yes, very good. We have 54 different outfits. Now, the businessman can choose 54 outfits out from the given number of tie and shirts. We will continue our discussion for this module sa part 2 ng video lesson na to. If you want to watch it, pwede mo namang i-click yung link na nasa itaas. Thank you so much for watching. Keep safe everyone!